in the last stream, we were working on expanding out our applied energistics to system. Specifically, we were looking at setting up automation with the molecular assembler and the associated ME interfaces to allow our A2 system to autocraft a bunch of different items. We also set up a couple of ME interfaces on top of a few mechanism factories to allow us to automate the production of certain resources using those factories. And as you can see here between streams, I have done a little bit of work on the base, trying to uh, tidy things up a little bit and give us a little bit more space. First things first, I have finally torn down the B apartment complex. We now have three more spaces for three more apiaries. And I did put in the apiary that we auto crafted in the last stream. And this is now set up just as I mentioned with cobblestone bees, wood bees, and RGB bees for now. There, of course, is a ton of space for more bees in the future, but the idea for this apiary is that all of the combs, of course, go into the apiary storage. They get pulled by this modular router. I have put a new puller module in, and then, of course, all of the combs, instead of getting processed by the centrifuges here, they all go directly to their own storage drawers because all of these combs can be used for crafting. Specifically, of course, over here, now, whenever we need wood, instead of having to grab saplings, plant them down, shift to make them grow, and then alt to mine to harvest all of the wood, we can instead just type in wood, grab the wood honeycombs, craft them into planks. This is where things get a little weird. For some reason, there seems to be a visual bug with specifically the AE2 crafting terminal. You'll see that if I come over here and I do this, I get oak logs. Whereas if I do the exact same thing inside the crafting terminal, it shows spruce logs, but it actually crafts oak logs when you, uh, when you craft them. Small little glitch, but it works nonetheless. And so basically now we can just do this and this, so we can get a ton of wood very quickly because we have it constantly coming in passively. We could also, if we wanted to, of course, take it one step further here, we could grab the wood combs out of our system, encode a new crafting pattern to teach our system how to make those wood logs. And then of course we could even go one step further after that, which we've already done and teach our system how to craft the oak logs into oak planks. And so now whenever I need planks, I can just go ahead and middle mouse click, say that I want 250, one of them next start, it's gonna go ahead and just craft me the oak planks. Nice. The same is true with the cobblestone. The cobblestone, we don't need quite as much for cobblestone because of course we have a cobblestone generator. But again, as I mentioned in the last episode, we can use those cobblestone combs for the making of things like apiaries because it requires just so many combs. And so having those come in and having those be stored is gonna be useful for us. The same is kind of true for the RGB combs. We can use those for the apiaries, but they also have the added side benefit of also being usable for any and every die that we want to make should we need it which is good. And so other than the new apiaries here, and uh, real quick, let me go and fill my uh, meat feeder here because it is currently very empty and I am very hungry, which is not ideal. Uh, thankfully, we do have a full tank over here of liquid meat. You'll have to see it. People in the YouTube comments uh, were a little confused. People were under the assumption that we could take a bucket of liquid meat, put it down on the ground and then stand in it in order to, uh, to get unlimited saturation. That used to be a feature in older versions of industrial foregoing. Unfortunately, it, uh, it doesn't work anymore. You'll see if I uh, try and find a space for this. I don't really want to uh, break any of my torches, but if I put this down, let's say like over here, whoops, a little bit of server like that. If I put this down like here and I stand in it, you'll see that my uh, my saturation that doesn't actually fill up. It's kind of hard to see because we are at, uh, at full saturation, but I have also tested this whilst being hungry. And unfortunately, it, uh, it just doesn't work in uh, in newer versions of industrial foregoing. But uh, either way, other than the apiaries here, I've also gone ahead and uh, as you can see, moved these machines over into this space. I've reset up the inscribers on the back wall. Those are all being powered by a new flux point and they're all set up the same as they were before with all the hoppers and a chest here for all of the associated parts. We've also, of course, got our mechanism machines with space for more mechanism and industrial foregoing machines on both sides. I've also expanded out this platform back here a little bit. I don't really have any immediate plans for what I'm gonna do with this space, but I kind of wanted this platform to be the same width all the way along. And speaking of which, as you can see over on the other side here, I have finally moved the blood altar over to its own platform. And uh, real quick, if I grab the Sanguine Sentium over here, I can uh, quickly show you why I've built this up in the sky. The reason for that is that uh, if we ever want to upgrade to a tier four blood altar, this is kind of the perfect height. If I right click here, 
for that tier four blood altar. You'll see that the uh, altar will fill this space perfectly. There is technically a tier five blood altar, but again, in this version of Minecraft, the tier five blood altar is just a work in progress. Tier five has no content. And I even looked through JI, if we type in blood altar and press say U on this, we can see all of the recipes that can be made in the blood altar and none of them require a tier five altar. And so for this pack, tier five isn't going to be required. Tier four is the highest that we can possibly do. And so there's not really much need for, um, for us to build that any higher. And then other than that, we just have a little bit of space here as well, which we're probably gonna use for auto crafting. I think I'm probably gonna move this molecular assembler and uh, this crafting CPU over to this area. And we'll build more of those, of course, as we go. We do have a little bit of space back here. I do want to move this reactor at some point. It's kind of just haphazardly placed right now. Uh, we'll probably look to move it when we upgrade it from hardened to um, either Niotic or maybe even spirited or potentially even nitro actually. And uh, speaking of Nitro, that kind of leads me to the first thing that I do want to work on in today's stream, and that is the automation of Nether Stars. Because right now we have a lot of the infrastructure required. We have a couple of weatherproof blocks. We have our mob crusher. And the only thing standing in between us and fully automated Nether Stars is a Wither Builder. This is a really cool machine from Industrial Foregoing that as the name suggests, will automatically build withers so long as you provide it with the wither skeleton skulls and the soul sand. The other thing that we're missing, of course, is more uh, witherproof blocks so that we can fully encapsulate a wither so that it doesn't blow up the wither builder. The witherproof blocks should be pretty straightforward for us now because they're just made with obsidian and netherite. Netherite we automated last episode and obsidian we have in abundance. And so if we go ahead and encode this recipe as well, we should be able to throw it into one of our ME interfaces. And at that point, we can probably just go and request like 200 of the witherproof blocks here. It's gonna take a little bit of time for our system to go through and actually make all of the netherite ingots. But, uh, and this is probably overkill for how many we actually need, uh, but it is gonna go ahead and uh, work on that in the background whilst we work on some other stuff. Cool. Uh, when you pick these machines up, by the way, and put them back down, you do have to re-enable auto-sort, and also you might have to reconfigure. Nope, actually, that's fine. The uh, item input and output is the same as when I put it down last time, which is good. Now, whilst that does its thing, one slight problem we are running into, as you may have seen earlier, is that our modular routers are backlogging on items, and I assume that my centrifuge over here is, uh, yes, very much so uh, backlogging as well. The reason for that is that we finally started to fill up these compacting drawers. Between streams, I did notice that Obsidian filled up, so I added a storage upgrade to that. But just now when I logged on, Beeswax is the next culprit. And so whilst I do think it's gonna be sensible for us to make some upgrades, such as the uh, diamond upgrade here that I made for the Obsidian draw, we should probably also at this point look at getting void upgrades for every single one of these items. All of these drawers are big enough to where we can probably just safely put a void upgrade in it. I don't really foresee us needing more than 75,000 beeswax in the not so distant future. And the same is true for all of the other items that we have. And so real quick here, I think what I might do is uh, craft up a bunch of these upgrade templates and then just craft a ton of these void upgrades. Again, we've got almost 8,000 obsidian, so uh, the obsidian cost is not really a factor. And then I think we'll just go around and make sure that each and every one of these has at least a void upgrade in it. Going forward, we should also look at adding uh, some storage upgrades to these as well, just so that we don't end up wasting too many resources. But for the time being, this is gonna prevent any one of these resources from fully clogging up our system, which I think is ideal. We'll do the same here. And we don't really need to do the same with these just yet because none of those are coming in automatically, but we do now have these void upgrades ready to go should we need them in the future. And now everything should hopefully just flow much more smoothly. Also, real quick, what I think I might do, again, whilst we're waiting for those witherproof blocks to come in, I think I'm gonna go ahead and make another jumbo tank here. The reason for that is that uh, we're doing quite a lot of crafts over with the dissolution chamber, uh, especially in regards to making ME drives. Between streams, I did make yet another 1K drive because we filled up all of the previous drives, again, on types. So there's still no need for us to go higher than 1K because we're still just filling up on types and not bytes. But we need honey every single time. And it does get a little bit tedious crafting four bottles with one bucket over and over and over again. And so instead, what I was thinking here is if we can get a jumbo tank down, that's going to give us easy access to honey whenever we need it. We can just grab a bucket and, uh, and grab as much as we want. Now, 
By default, these are set to round robin, the fluid pipes are set to round robin, which is good for us because it means that if I put the tank down, let's say here, and I go ahead and throw down a fluid pipe right next to it, that should begin immediately distributing the honey between both the jumbo tank and the honey congealer. So both of these are gonna get 50% of the honey each because the fluid pipes are by default set to round robin. That's not the same for the item pipes, by the way. The item pipes by default are set to nearest first. So they will go to the nearest inventory first. Unfortunately, not the case for the fluid pipes. I say, unfortunately, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Uh, for this circumstance, it actually works out quite well for us. And speaking of which, another thing that could be a potentially good idea for us, especially in terms of automation here, could be automatically exporting that honey to the dissolution chamber so that it's always in there when we need it. To make that happen, we would need to get another storage bus. The storage buses can go on inventories like the draw controller and like our chests, but they can also go onto fluid inventories as well, which is pretty nifty. If we make another one of these uh, ME interfaces, and if we use that to craft another ME storage bus, just as soon as we make our one billionth piston for the playthrough here, you can in fact put the ME storage bus, I believe directly onto a jumbo tank like this. And then from there, if we connect that up to our pre-existing ME cable, which now does just run to the center of this uh, middle pathway here, as you can see, like this, we could then hopefully, and I find it easier if I'm like right up against the roof with this jetpack, we can hopefully run this all the way across like this. I could definitely do with a higher tier jetpack, which I think we now are not too far away from being able to make actually. So we should probably look into that sooner rather than later. But if we uh, do get this connected up, I believe that that should work and that should make this honey available to the system. So let me go quickly check in here. I don't think it's gonna show it to me, in here because I think we might need some kind of fluid terminal to actually see the fluids that we have. Yeah, you'll see there is an ME fluid terminal here that you can make, but even without the fluid terminal, I think what we should be able to do is get a fluid export bus, which again, is not too bad. It's two iron, one formation core, one piston and two green dye. The green dye we don't have, but we do have mystical green petals, although, it's probably in our best interest to make this using the RGB honeycomb just so that we don't accidentally run out of green petals. Again, let's make our billionth and one piston right there, and then let's get that uh, fluid bus. So over here, if I were to say throw down the fluid export bus like this, and then run cable down and around to our pre-existing cable, which is just on the opposite side of this platform, something, like this, we should be able then to tell that export bus to automatically export the honey that's being stored in the jumbo tank over to the dissolution chamber. Right now it's got one bucket in. Let's grab one bucket of honey out of our new jumbo tank over here. And then over on the export bus, if we open that up, I think we should just be able to put this honey bucket in and that should begin, I think, exporting the honey to the dissolution chamber. Now it's not doing that currently. Can I set the back here to input? The back is already set to input. That's my bad. We need a uh, fluid storage bus. Of course, it uh, is not just a uh, regular storage bus over here that we need. That is fine. Let me take this one away and we could potentially put this down over here and connect that up at some point to give our system kind of overflow access to that but uh, we do need to make a fluid storage bus in order to be able to access that fluid. That is my bad. Let me get even more pistons. Let's make one more sticky piston here. And then let's see if we can't make this happen. We do need a fluid interface, which again, it seems to be pretty fine. It is boom and boom. And then if we do the exact same thing, if we put this down like this and connect it up with the cable, this should now be exporting the honey to here. It is nice. Look at that. And so now going forward, this will always have honey in it, which is kind of perfect because it means that one more thing we can do here is we can get another ME interface and it's gonna make automating the usage of the dissolution chamber so much easier because now we can put this down like this. We can connect it up again with cable. We can use our wrench to make sure it points down at the dissolution chamber like so. And now over in our pattern terminal, we should be able to, for example, teach our system how to make the 1K ME storage component and the ME storage housing. To do that, it is gonna be a little bit finicky, but thankfully you can drag items from JEI into annoyingly just the input slot. Although if I change it, can I put it in the output slot? I can. 
That is perfect. Because that means that even if we don't have the items, we can still drag in the required items from JI. For example, here we need certain squads. We do need four certain squads. Can I change the quantity there? Annoyingly, it looks like I can't, but I should be able to uh, do something like this. One, two, three, four, put that in. And then we need, I think it's three redstone and one logic process. So it is indeed. So one, two, three redstone and one logic processor. Nice. And then we can encode this. And because now there's always going to be honey in this dissolution chamber, this should just work. And again, what we should be able to do here is we should be able to leave the input as enabled. And on the output, if we set the top to push, it should push the finished product back into the ME interface in the exact same way that we're doing with our mechanism machines. And so real quick, let's give this a go. If I want a 1K component, can I make that happen? I can start over here. It does take a bit of time, of course, for it actually to work, but you'll see it put all of the required items in. And once it's done, we should see that 1K storage component getting ejected up into the ME interface. It did, nice. And then of course we can do the exact same thing here. If we teach the ME storage housing for this one, we're gonna have to do the same thing where we're gonna have to drag the housing down like this. And then in terms of making it, we do need to get the pure certus quartz, which again, if we want to fully automate this, we will have to teach our system how to make that pure certus quartz as well, but that shouldn't be too difficult. We do have the mechanism machines for it ready to go. Uh, again, three redstone is completely fine. One, two, three. And then we also need two of the vibrant quartz glass. That's the slightly tricky bit. I do believe, even though we don't have any vibrant quartz glass, I think you can somewhat jankily do it like this. There probably is a way to increase the number here. I don't know it off the top of my head, but I think if you drag two in and click encode, you'll see now it does say two vibrant quartz glass. And so you can kind of cheese it a little bit like that. And again, same idea here. If we throw this like this, that's now ready to make the housing. And over here, all we would need to do is go back to a crafting pattern, teach our system how to make the vibrant glass. And if we throw that in over here, it should now be able to make the housing as well. Start. And it totally works. Nice. And so this is gonna make our life so much easier because it also means that now if we did want to get 4K drives, making the 4K components is really not too difficult. We can just encode this pattern, throw it into one of our ME interfaces like this, and we just request it and it just does it for us. The same is kind of true with the 16K here. If I wanted a 16K component, it's just three 4K components. Uh, we do need more patterns here as well. That's completely fine. Let's get another, say 32 of those if we have what it takes, which we totally do. And then we can of course just take those out and pop them in there, encode. And we can finally do the exact same thing for the 64K component as well. Now, the only thing that could be a problem for us here is potentially the calculation processes because we don't have those automated we do have 12 of them and how many do we need for one 64k processor we're missing one calculation and 17 logic but the good news is is that if we just go make those everything else is taken care of automatically which is again really where the power comes from and so you know what let's see about getting a 16k drive that should totally work we'll hit start over in here that craft is on its way it's gonna take a while of course to make all of the required 1k parts but again we can just leave that to do its thing and when we come back, it'll be ready to go. Speaking of doing its thing, the witherproof glass is definitely done. Perfect. We know it's done because we only have one crafting CPU. If it wasn't done, it wouldn't let us do another auto craft. And so over here, my plan is basically to build a box kind of directly in front of the crusher here. And in fact, I'm gonna move the crusher. I, now that I mentioned it, I'm gonna pick this back up and uh, we're gonna move the crusher back in line with our other mob farm over on uh, the right hand side behind me here because I want my wither setup in this little box right here. Something a little bit like this. I'm of course gonna build it a little taller. And of course this is almost certainly bigger than it needs to be. The Twitch chat does make a good point here actually that it might look a little nicer with witherproof glass as opposed to witherproof blocks. What I might do is I might do something similar to what I've done with the mob farm next to us here. I might use the witherproof blocks for the corners potentially or for an accent around the outside and then we can uh, smelt this into this tinted glass which is also uh, witherproof you can also blast it into witherproof glass but the tinted glass i do believe uh, connects and looks pretty good and so if we were to go over to our smelting factory we could just throw a stack of this in that's going to get us some tinted glass and then what i might do is i might leave the floor as witherproof blocks and then kind of build some of the walls out of the glass what we can also do here is we can uh, finally craft a diamond wand. We could also actually craft 
the Infinity Wand if we liked as well. This does cost another star, but has infinite usage. It's never going to break, which is incredibly useful. And so over here, if we do one, two, three, four, five, we can then place down all of these. Perfect. And I think what we'll do is we'll put down the tinted glass around in a similar fashion to what we've done with the mob farm. And all of that tinted glass should be in here. It is indeed. So I think what we'll do is we'll kind of fill this in like this. And then if we've got enough weatherproof blocks left, I don't think it's going to be necessary, but we could do the corners, like the corner pillars, using weatherproof blocks as well. All right, and there we go. We've got a giant box here that is perfectly weatherproof and ready to house and kill many, many withers. So in order to do that, as I mentioned previously, we are going to need to get the wither builder. Now, the tricky part about the wither builder is that it requires a supreme machine frame in the center here. Almost everything else we have, we're only missing some plastic. That shouldn't be a problem because we do have a bunch of latex that we can run through our latex processing unit. In fact, if I do one of these real quick, let me get that set up so that it actually is uh, ready to go for when we need it. And one thing we are gonna have to do here is of course power the latex processing unit, uh, but we also need to power the crusher as well. Uh, that's uh, over here, ready to go. I also do need to put the range add-on bank into that crusher. This, of course, is now extreme overkill, and in fact, is going to kind of chop into the mob farm ever so slightly, to the point where it could well be worth getting a smaller upgrade. We'll see how it goes. For now, I don't think it's gonna be that big a deal, especially given that we already have a staggering number of all of the mob drops, but if we ever get low on pink slime or uh, liquid meat, we could always uh, change the upgrade in there to be something a little bit smaller. But for now, let's see if we can't get a few more of the flux points that we need in order to power both the crusher and the latex processing unit. Again, this is just flux cores, which are easy enough with redstone, super easy. Good, we also should have our flux configurator, and so it should be as easy as doing this and this, and then over here we can do the exact same thing over on the crusher. Boom and boom. Nice. And so now those are permanently going to be filled with power, which you love to see. Of course, we do need water here. I forget that every single time. I do also forget whether or not the pipes from pipes can extract from multiple sources. If I do this and I do this, is that going to work? It totally does work. You can put both fluids through one pipe. That is pretty nifty. Cool, and so that's gonna passively make us rubber, which is good. Now, as for that Supreme Machine Frame, this is where things get a little bit finicky. This, again, has to be made in a dissolution chamber with, of course, the Advanced Machine Frame, which we're gonna to have to make again via the Simple Machine Frame and the Pity Machine Frame. All of that stuff is stuff we've done before, and all of that stuff is fairly straightforward. The only tricky part, really, about all of this is the ether gas in the middle. Because diamonds we have, netherite we have, plastic we have, and the Advanced Machine Frame we can make, Ether gas, though, is made by placing a fluid laser base with laser drills over a wither with a purple laser lens inside of the laser drill. And so for this to work effectively, I think we're also going to want to get a stasis chamber. This is a nifty little block from Industrial Foregoing that's going to allow us to hold the wither perfectly in place to allow us to easily extract the ether gas using the fluid laser. This again requires another advanced machine frame, three soul sand, two gold gears, a piston, and then two gas tiers. Gas tiers we don't currently have. However, there is a Britannia recipe that will allow us to turn ender pearls into gas tiers if we have the alchemy catalyst. And thankfully, the alchemy catalyst is not particularly difficult to make. It requires two standard Minecraft brewing stands along with just one mana pearl, which we can of course get by taking a regular ender pearl and chucking it into our mana pool. Nice. We are almost certainly going to need more mana to make this happen because the recipe, for example, on the mana pearl here requires a very small amount of mana. Whereas the recipe on the guest here using the alchemy catalyst and the ender pearl is a fair bit higher. Again, this is still not a full mana pool for demonstration purposes. This is one of the uh, tiny diluted mana pools, but still it's a lot more mana than we've used up until this point. The way this works, by the way, you simply place the alchemy catalyst underneath the mana pool, like so, and then now it's capable of doing those kind of crafts. And so, as a second ago, we just used one ender pearl to get a mana pearl. Now, this mana pool is no longer able to make mana pearls. Instead, it's gonna make gas tiers. And in fact, it looks like we already have enough mana to make at least one gas tier. The real question, though, 
is do we have enough mana to make the two gas tiers required here for the stasis chamber? We don't. That should be fine though. We didn't really use all that much. It should be fairly easy for us to just drop a few more stacks of coal onto our newly placed down Endor Flames. And I think fairly quickly, we should get enough mana in here again for us to get another gas tier. And boom, nice. Okay, cool. So I guess in this case, one thing we are gonna have to do, one, one kind of downside to this setup that we have over here is that this dissolution chamber now can really only be used for recipes requiring honey. And if we wanted to make any other kind of uh, recipe in the dissolution chamber, for example, uh, the supreme machine frame or the advanced machine frame or the simple machine frame, all of those require different items in the dissolution chamber. And so for that, we're going to need at least one more dissolution chamber. And it really depends on how much automation we want to do as to whether or not we want to have kind of one dissolution chamber per liquid. We could have one for latex, one for pink slime, and like one for ether gas. I don't know though if we're going to need that many industrial foregoing items from those liquids going forward. And so I think for now, it's probably gonna be best if we just go ahead and get one more dissolution chamber and kind of just use that as our new general purpose dissolution chamber for making all of the advanced machine frames that we're going to need. Real quick here, I was just trying to make the uh, diamond gear for our new dissolution chamber and we can do it, uh, but it does require blazing blood, which is a little bit of a pain to, uh, to get going every time we wanna make a diamond gear. And so I do think one quick detour that we could make here is into the multi servo press. This is a machine from Thermal Expansion, fairly straightforward stuff. We do need two bronze, one redstone flux coil and two constantine gears, along with of course the standard machine frame. But this is going to allow us to fairly easily craft gears such as the diamond gear without having to resort to using the, uh, the blazing blood every single time. And of course, uh, one of the big benefits is that it is gonna be automatable as well. And so real quick, I'm gonna run through the standard process. Thankfully, making the machine frames from thermal expansion is definitely the easiest part of the setup. And so if we do a quick one of these, and then of course we don't have any starlight. I think the missing bucket is this corner piece right here. Let's give that another try. Perfect. And then the only thing we're missing at that point is two bronze ingots and two constantine gears. Constantine is an alloy you can make in the smeltery with nickel and copper. Thankfully, neither of those require blazing blood. And then bronze, of course, we made before. That's just copper and tin in the smeltery as well. And a little bit of constantine and bronze later. That should be everything we need for the multi server press. Nice. Now, by default, the multi server press just makes plates, it doesn't actually make gears. In order to get it to make gears, and I'm going to put this. I'm gonna put it a little bit further down. I'll probably put it maybe over here, but I do of course have to run power over to it. So I think what we'll do is we'll do something like this. I do have a little bit of a gap for more mechanism machines, and then we'll maybe start the thermal expansion machines maybe over here. And we can always fill in more machines in the middle after the fact. Uh, by default, this just makes plates. If you want to make gears with the multi servo press, you need the gear working die. This we can make by pulling four invar ingots out over any gear with the smelt rate. And so what I've gone ahead and done is I've put a bit more iron and nickel in here to the point where we should be able to pull out an iron gear. And then once we've pulled that out, we should then be able to take it out of the cast and then pull out the invar over it. So if we do something like this and like this, that should get us the gear working die, which then finally is going to allow us to use that multi servo press to make diamond gears, making those diamond gears just so much easier for us to make in the future. This wasn't strictly necessary, but it just saves us so much time going forward, not having to continually put more and more and more blazing blood into the smeltery, which I think is gonna be a, a tremendous time saver over the long run. And so uh, now that we have this though, we should have basically everything that we need in order to make a new dissolution chamber, which then should be basically everything that we need in order to make all the way up to two more advanced machine frames. Actually, we need a lot more of these pity machine frames than I thought because we need one for the Wither Builder, we then need one for the Fluid Laser Base, we then need one for the Laser Drill, although you can have more than one Laser Drill to get the Ether Gas faster, we then need one for the Stasis Chamber, and so it's very quickly becoming quite a, a big task in terms of the number of Pity Machine Frames that we need, to the point where I think it's probably worth teaching our system here, at the very least, how to make these waxed machine blocks, so that again, we don't have to keep doing the uh, manual crafting going forward. And so, what is also probably gonna be a good and sensible course of action here 
is first of all, teaching our system how to make these ME interfaces and these molecular assemblers so that going forward, we can more easily kind of expand our system to do more crafting for us. If we can auto craft the auto crafting, that's gonna make more auto crafting easier. And so let's put these in here, which is why I've taken the other patterns out temporarily. I would like the formation core and the annihilation core. At that point, is that everything our system needs to make more ME interfaces? If I wanted, let's say two more of those, that looks like it's now very doable and substantially faster than I would have done it. And so I know I said we weren't gonna do this, like put all of our ME interfaces around one molecular assembler. For now, it is gonna work temporarily, but we will move these out to more molecular assemblers soon. This though should allow us, in terms of the uh, pity machine frames, to teach our system how to make the Wanks machine block, uh, of course, over in here. And then we can also teach it how to make the trimmed wanks like this, as well as the wanks planks like this. And we can put all of those in over here to the point now, if I want to request like, I don't know, 32 of those wanks machine blocks, we should just be able to type it in, click start, and it's just gonna go ahead and do all of that crafting behind the scenes for us. Cool. And of course, if we wanted to, we could go and steal two more of those acceleration cards over here to make that molecular assembler as fast as possible. Again, it would be even faster if we had a molecular assembler for each different interface, because right now you'll see it's kind of jumping back and forth between which crafts it's doing. And there are crafts it could do in parallel, but it's not because it doesn't have enough uh, molecular assemblers to do so. Either way, uh, back over here, we now have enough of those wanked machine blocks to where we can just go and make a ton of pity machine frames over in our pressure chamber. And not too long later, we now have three advanced machine frames, one simple machine frame, and a bunch more pity machine frames. Even more of these are still, of course, over in the chest over here. I just took the first ones out and I upgraded four of them to simple, and then three of those simple to advanced, which really wasn't too bad. We have most of the items here. It was mostly a case of gathering the pink slime and the latex and just putting them into the dissolution chamber easy enough. And so now we should be a lot closer to being able to craft these machines up here. So let's start with the stasis chamber maybe. This is pretty doable now. We have what it takes to make a piston and we have everything else, especially the gas tiers, to make the stasis chamber. Nice. After that, we want the fluid laser base. This is a little bit more expensive, but again, we do now have everything we need. Boom and boom. And then we need at least one fluid laser drill here. You can put multiple more of these down, quite a lot more of these down to make it faster. We're gonna start with one. I'm hoping that's gonna be fast enough. We don't need a ton of ether gas, although it still might take a little bit of time to get up to 135 millibuckets because this stuff comes in slowly. And then uh, finally, of course, we do need that wither builder, but the wither builder, of course, requires the ether gas. So what we need to do now is we need to find a place to put this because we need to take uh, three wither skeleton skulls along with, of course, four soul sand. And we kind of need to find a place that's not this box to put down a wither that we're gonna hold in stasis kind of forever. I guess we could put it down kind of directly above this box if we wanted to. For example, we could put our stasis chamber down right about here. We do need to keep this torch down, otherwise mobs are gonna spawn. And of course that in and of itself is gonna require a flux point to, uh, to keep it powered. That's completely fine. Let's do something like this and make sure it's set to our network. And now if I show the area here, this will basically hold any mob in this area forever. And if I walk into it, you'll see that we get this real big slowness effect and it makes it real hard for us to get out. But if we put the wither there, the wither will just be held there forever. And so now what we should then be able to do is we should be able to build this on top. The Twitch chat does actually make a surprisingly good point here in that we could actually do this inside of a compact machine. I keep forgetting that we have compact machines in the pack. Compact machines are actually very nifty. And the idea here is that we can craft these. And thankfully in this pack, they're actually fairly easy to craft. You just make them as opposed to uh, usually where you have to get a, uh, a field projection setup going. But for us, we can pick any of these compact machines going all the way up to the maximum size from tiny to maximum, tiny being the smallest, maximum being the biggest. I think large might do it. For large, we just need eight compact machine wall with obsidian. The compact machine wall here is just iron and redstone. So it's actually very easy to make. Let's go with the large compact machine here. And then let's put that down for now. Let's say right about here. You can move these in the future. And in order to get into the compact machine, you do need to get a personal shrinking device. This is just a standard book, two eyes of ender, a glass pin, and an iron ingot. Nice. With this, if you right click on 
the Comeback Machine, it takes you into a tiny little pocket dimension. And basically what we can do here is we can place down our stasis chamber in the exact same way we did before. We can show the working area. Before I give it power, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down the soul sand on top of it like this, not like that, of course, like this. And then we can also go ahead and throw down three skulls, not completely just yet. Uh, we do need to power this. Now, one problem we will run into here is that this won't be getting power. The reason for that is that back in the overworld, again, if you just right click on your personal shrinking device anywhere in the machine, it will take you back out to the main area. Out here, none of this is chunk loaded. If you want to chunk load it, you can go to FTB chunks, click on claim chunks, and then you'll see right now I've got zero out of however many force loaded chunks. If you hold shift and then click, it will force load, aka chunk load, that chunk. And so real quick, if I do this to chunk load the entire base, now when I go back in here, this should be getting power because that area outside is still loaded before it was completely unloaded, which means no power was being generated. Basically though, now what we should be able to do is we should be able to uh, do, I think, I don't know exactly where this needs to go, but I think we can place it down a fair distance above the weather and it should still work. I'm gonna place the fluid laser base right here, and then I'm gonna place the fluid laser drill right next to it. We do kind of though want that fluid laser drill pointing directly into the fluid laser base. I'm gonna do it like this, and that should work. You can also leave a one block gap as well, which you know what I'll do just for kind of demonstration purposes here. If we put the block here, and then we put the fluid laser drill down here, and it's just the laser drill, by the way, it's not the fluid laser drill, they're both the same. But uh, you'll see this is working, there's a little particle effect there showing that's working, but you can put it right up against it if you really want to. And these do also require power. For that, we could get an extra flux point, but we could also just run some universal cable up from our pre-existing flux point and around to the fluid laser. Now, one final thing we do need actually before we go back in is we do also need to get this purple laser lens. This is made by crafting either a regular laser lens with purple dye, or you can make it from scratch in the dissolution chamber with 250 millibuckets of latex, four glass pans, and some purple dye. Thankfully for us, purple dye is now imminently craftable, and glass pans we should already have, we do indeed. Uh, the only thing we don't currently have is any latex inside of our dissolution chamber. Currently it has a little bit of excess pink slime in there. That's fine, we can go ahead and break this, put it back down, swap it out for latex, and then if we do four glass pans and one purple dye, that's gonna get us the purple laser lens required in order to get the ether gas. And so back over in here, let's go ahead and run the basic universal cable up the back wall like this over to the laser drill is where it wants to go. By the way, the laser base itself can't receive any power. It's the laser drill that takes power and then kind of gives it to the fluid laser base. The final thing we actually do need uh, now that I mention it, is a tank of some persuasion because we do need to be able to store the ether gas. Now, we could make a jumbo tank here, but as you're about to see, the ether gas comes in in very, 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 very small quantities to the point where 32 buckets of it is probably gonna be enough to last a lifetime. So I'm gonna put that down right about here. Inside of here, I'm gonna set the output to push to the top, so it's gonna push any liquid up into the singularity tank. And then from there, I think we should be good to go. So now if I spawn the wither, this might seem dangerous, but the wither should not explode. It shouldn't even get to the explosion stage because the stasis chamber is gonna hold it in stasis forever. And so down here, this is taking power to hold this in stasis. And up here, we should see this hopefully start to fill up with ether gas. Now you'll see that with one laser drill, it's very, very, very slow, to the point where we just got, I wanna say a tiny little bit of ether gas. Oh, no, I need to put the lens in, that's my bad. If I put the lens in, now we can wait for this to uh, to run its game here, and I believe we're gonna get 10 millibuckets at a time, once this finishes. So you'll see, it takes quite a while to get up to 20. Once the progress is full though, we will get 10 millibuckets of ether gas. We do need 135 millibuckets of ether gas to make the Supreme Machine frame here for the automatic wither builder. And so at this point, we have kind of a few options as to how we go about doing this. We could just leave this here and eventually it will get up to uh, 135 buckets. Again, if you want to keep this running whilst you're not in here, you do again have to chunk load uh, this area as well, which we uh, can do in the exact same way. Click and then shift click to chunk load. Now this will still be loaded and still be working 
whilst we're not around. Alternatively, and there we go, there's our first 10 mil buckets. Alternatively, you can put down more laser drills, but you can also make speed upgrades for the uh, the pre-existing machines. And not just the laser drill, but also things like the dissolution chamber and whatnot. Um, I think it's called a speed add-on, actually. It is. So there are these processing add-ons and these speed add-ons. Both of these, I believe, are good for increasing the speed. There's also the efficiency add-on as well. I think all of these are good for making your machine faster, and they're really not too difficult to make. You don't have to go through tier one to get to tier two. You can go straight to tier two here. And so I think we might go ahead and look at getting some, uh, maybe some efficiency and speed add-ons for the laser drill here to see if we can't get this coming in just a tiny bit faster. For that, we just need more latex, which we do still have in here. And of course we can go and dump that in over here. And we did also just make a bunch of diamond gears. So we should have quite a few of those ready to go as well. We've got eight in here. So we just need two sugar along with two redstone and two glass panes. So the glass panes we've already got, redstone we've got. As far as the efficiency goes, it's kind of the same, but with blaze rods. And then as far as the processing goes, we need a furnace and a crafting table. I don't know if all of these upgrades work inside of the laser, but none of them are so expensive that it's not worth a try. So I think real quick over here, we can probably just go ahead and make basically all of these. If we do two of these, I think it was two of these, two of these, and two of these, that's gonna get us the speed upgrade, and I'll bookmark all three of these. Uh, once the speed upgrade's done, we'll do the processing next, and then the efficiency after, and we'll go and see what works over inside of the compact machine. And as you can see here, with the speed and processing upgrades temporarily placed in the dissolution chamber, this is now a lot faster than it was previously at making these kinds of upgrades, which is, uh, is very nice indeed. So, let's take all of these back in here. This guy's still hanging out, which you love to see. And let's see, first of all, we're at 40 millibuckets, which is not too bad. If we do this, you'll see that starts going a lot faster. And this starts going up in bigger chunks. That's actually much quicker without any extra laser drills, which is nice. That goes up to 60 and that goes up to 70. Yeah, no, this is much quicker. Nice. And that's going to get us to 135 fairly quickly. Uh, one thing we are going to have to do here, I think, is we are going to have to uh, take that tank and move it over into the overworld because we do need to, of course, get that ether gas into the dissolution chamber. And so what I'll do here is I'm gonna go ahead and break and replace this dissolution chamber here. We do still have two of these diamond gears. And so I feel like actually real quick, before I do that, I should probably make at least one more speed upgrade for the dissolution chamber, just so that all of the other uh, stuff that we're doing here is also that little bit faster. That does also mean we need more of these glass panes as well. That's not a problem. Let's do one more speed upgrade. And we could make these for all of the dissolution chambers as well, actually going forward. We could try and get quite a few of these going, but uh, that is gonna need annoyingly 250 millibuckets of latex. And we're gonna have to put a full bucket in here because of the way that I've set this up. Although people did point out that what we can do here, if we wanna be a little bit more efficient on our latex, which is probably good because we do only have a finite amount of it until we get our uh, tree fluid extractors back down. What we can do is over here, we can set this to pull. That's gonna pull latex in. And then as soon as this is made, we can then set it to push to get all of the latex back out. And that way we don't end up wasting any latex like we've been doing with uh, with the pink slime. I'm not too worried about the pink slime because the pink slime is, uh, is infinite. But uh, if we do that, there we go. Now we can set that to disabled and that's all good. So what we want to do now, to move that out of the way because we want to put our ether gas tank there. What we now want to do is get the required items together for this. And I think we have basically everything we need. The only thing we might not have is uh, now one more diamond gear because we just spent them all. That's fine. We also might not have two netherite, but we can craft it. Good stuff. Then we need two more plastic, which I'm fairly certain we've got. We do indeed, perfect. And that one advanced machine frame, which we did make earlier. Nice, that netherite is done, perfect. And so I think that's basically everything, uh, apart from two more diamonds actually, to go alongside the diamond gear, but that's basically everything apart from the ether gas. So let's put you, in here, and actually, never mind. We have diamond gears ready to go. So boom, 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 and boom. Again, doesn't matter where you put those in the dissolution chamber, so long as they are somewhere. And then let's get another singularity tank. In fact, people did point out in the Twitch chat that an ender tank might not be a terrible idea here. The ender tank fairly easy to make, especially when you've got infinite blaze rods and ender pearls. Because with this, we can go ahead and put one of these down uh, anywhere in the world. But I'm going to put mine here. And we can then put the other ender tank inside of the compact machine above the fluid laser base so that any ether gas we make is automatically kind of teleported out to the overworld, just like you can do with a regular ender chest. 
One thing to bear in mind if you're playing on a server like I am is that you probably want to right click a diamond onto the front like this. That's gonna lock the ender tank to you. So now, uh, normally by default, if you put this down, anybody on the server who uses the white, white, white frequency can access this tank. Once you put the diamond gear on it, now this is white, 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 but it's locked to me. So only I can access that frequency. Uh, speaking of white, 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 if you want, you can change the frequency of the ender tank if you wanna have multiple ender tanks. For example, uh, I could make some, let's say light grid dye here to uh, signify ether gas. And then I could go and change the frequency here to gray, white, gray, right? And right now, these two are not gonna link. If I fill this tank up, it's not gonna connect to this tank because they have different frequencies. But if I make this one also gray, white, gray, now over inside of the compact machine, when I place this ender tank on top of this fluid laser base, it should link directly up to our pre-existing setup. And then that ether gas should be available out here for us to use. It's just in very small quantities. I think it's kind of hard to see. But uh, back over here, if we put down this singularity tank, which currently has 530 millibuckets of ether gas in, we can once again set this to pull. That's gonna pull in enough ether gas. We can then turn that off. And as soon as we have our supreme machine frame, we can again set it to push. That's gonna push all that back in there, which you love to see. And boom, we have our supreme machine frame. Nice. And so now what we can do is we can, I guess what I'm gonna do real quick here is I'm gonna kind of dump all of the uh, ether gas that we have into at this tank here, just so that we're not carrying around a random tank full of ether gas. Yeah, no, there we go. That is uh, is filling up. It's kind of hard to see how much is in there, but I'm pretty sure going forward, we should be able to pull a bucket of that out once it gets to a bucket's worth. And now what we should be able to do is make that with a builder. We are just missing two plastic sheets, which we should be able to make using our tiny dry rubber. Let's do a quick one of these, one of these, and then thankfully now our smelting factory is very quick. And so one of these is gonna get us all of the plastic that we need. And so with this, we can now place the wither builder along with its own flux point, of course, to provide it with power underneath this platform here. Because the way the wither builder works, if we look at the working area, is thankfully, it leaves a one block gap between where the builder is and where the builder places. That is of course, because it needs wither proof blocks between it to make sure the wither doesn't destroy it. So we're gonna put it here. We're gonna put this on the bottom side, shift right click there. And then we're also gonna make sure we use our flux configurator to configure this, perfect. And then now all we should have to do is get another exporter just like we did for the fluid earlier. This time we're gonna do it for items. We need a formation core and we need a piston. The formation core we can just request, start, and we're missing a logic processor. That actually makes a tremendous amount of sense. Thankfully, uh, we have all of the items required here to make a ton of logic processors nice and quickly over in this guy. So if I do uh, redstone in here, a logic circuit in here and silicon in here, and of course, uh, all of the acceleration cards in like so, that should hopefully make a bunch of logic processes for us nice and quickly. I'll leave that running, we just need the one for the time being. And then as per usual, we also need to get, uh, you guessed it, a piston in order to make this work as well. For the piston, we should have everything we need, we do indeed. Let's request that formation core, start and boom, nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this connected up with yet more Flux cable 12 actually might not be enough here, but I think all we should have to do, actually it should be enough because I forgot we have some cable nearby connected to the draw controller. It's actually just right here. So if I do this, I've not counted how many channels we're using recently. We could be getting close to the point where we're kind of filling up one of the sides with, uh, with its channel count, but this should now be connected. And what we should be able to do here is we should be able to get some wither skeleton skulls and some soul sand. And thankfully, I think the way that the wither builder is set up is such that, uh, I'm gonna have to build a platform actually because the uh, if I try and put these in, I'm just gonna fall. So let me get some cobblestone to sand on real quick here. But it's set up such that there are dedicated spots for the soul sand and the wither skeleton skulls. So we shouldn't have to worry at all really about the wither builder here filling up with like just soul sand. You'll see there are dedicated slots for both. If we go ahead into the exporter, Right now, it's only got one slot here. I could say export with the skeleton skulls and it will start doing that. It'll start exporting those skulls. But if we want to export more than one thing, there are two things we could do. We could make another exporter. That seems a little unnecessary. What we could also do though, is we could make another capacity card. This does require another one of these uh, basic cards that we can then upgrade to capacity with a charged Sodas Quartz. 
And this, as the name suggests, is going to allow us to increase the capacity of the export bus. Like this. You'll see we now have five slots. If we put Soul Sand in here as well, it's going to export Soul Sand. As soon as that timer runs down, it's going to spawn the Wither. The Wither is then going to go ahead and explode as per usual. And then is then going to get killed by the, the Crusher. The Mob Crusher is full of junk, which of course is, uh, is not ideal. What we can probably do here is we could probably do with getting a modular router and just like we've been doing with our mob farm over here we could do with kind of piping from the mob crusher down towards the draw controller here so that all of the items get sent around including the nether stars we of course do want these going into their own draw as well uh, i will give those a compacting draw so we have them in block form as well should we need it but uh, yeah we could definitely do with setting up another modular router that shouldn't be too difficult. I'm fairly certain we have spares. We've got many spare routers now at this point. We have pullers and we have senders. And so real quick, let's just do a quick one of these. We're gonna pull from you into here like that. And then we're gonna send down to you like that. Cool. And if we don't have them already, we can always go ahead and make some more speed upgrades as well, just to make that nice and quick so that we never end up losing any nether stars or anything like that to a blocked up crusher, which I don't think should really be an issue. I think this looks kind of fine. I'm also fairly certain I have a couple of stack upgrades lying around from the uh, modular router that used to be over in the apartment complex that I uh, took down between streams. And so, yeah, that is working a lot better. Although I wonder if we're filling up on something that doesn't, oops, something that doesn't uh, have a space. We are, it's raw chicken. I'm hopeful that that's not too much of an issue. We should, uh, you know what? Okay, let me <laughs> let me go and make that uh, smaller range add-on. We talked about it earlier. I think this is definitely gonna be useful because the only alternative is that we set up the exact same system over here where we have kind of the trash can filtered setup. And so I do think it's probably gonna be worthwhile us just quickly whipping up one of these much smaller range add-ons, which should be incredibly easy for us to do. And there we go, there's a tier four range add-on. This one's just an iron range add-on. And so now if we go over here and we just kind of swap this out and we show working area, this is a much more reasonable working area for this crusher. In fact, we could have gone one lower, I think, and that still uh, would have worked. And now we shouldn't end up getting things like this crossbow here. And instead we should just get nether stars. Cool. And those are gonna be particularly useful because they allow us to make more apiaries and to upgrade those apiaries as we go forward. Specifically, we saw last episode that we couldn't make a tier two apiary. Now we totally can. And let me quickly go ahead and teach our system how to make the tier three and tier four apiaries here. Also the chat is right. I did take both range add-ons out. That is my bad chat. Let me uh, replace that in there. That's my mistake. Oh, we do have random, what in the world? <laughs> I have no idea what we're managing to spawn in there. That might just be because it's dark. It doesn't need to be dark. I could probably put a light in there to make it uh, bright enough, but then the weather would just get rid of the torch. So we'd need to have some kind of um, light on the outside that could pass through, which I don't think, unfortunately, we have in this pack. Either way, there's the tier three and four apiaries. If I put those in here, can I make a tier four apiary? The only thing that might be holding us back is potentially grass. Yeah, so you'll see this is where we needed so much grass. We're also in need of even more cobblestone honeycomb block, just missing one though. And then uh, it also shows gold honeycomb block here actually, 1,517. You can see this is staggeringly expensive in order to, to craft that, which is not ideal. So we do need way more honeycomb blocks if we wanna get up to that high tier, to the point where we could probably do with adding, I was gonna say more bees, but I don't know if more bees would work in here because you can still only have one of any kind of bee in here at any given time. So adding more cobblestone bees wouldn't really do anything. We kind of just need to upgrade the apiary itself. For example, if we were to go ahead and grab, I guess a tier two apiary here, we could then use that tier two apiary, uh, maybe even a tier three apiary. How expensive is the tier three apiary? Too expensive. It says we're just missing one. Is that really the case? Because if we're just missing one, that is probably gonna come through for us very shortly at which point we could probably go straight for the tier three apiary and really start to get a lot of wood and cobblestone honeycombs, which we can then use going forward to make more tier four apiaries for all of our other, uh, you know, resource producing bees. It was indeed just one block that we were missing. Start. So that should get us a, a tier three honeycomb, hopefully uh, somewhat quickly. 
again with uh, the somewhat slow molecular assembler. Uh, that should hopefully come in somewhat fast. Real quick, let me go and if I type in wither, I'm going to kind of just mute all of these wither sounds. Also, uh, is it blast or is it explosion? I think it's a generic entity explosion. I'm going to turn that right down as well, just so we don't keep hearing the, uh, the same blasts from the wither over and over again. And I think I might also need to jar up the bees that are in here to make sure they don't get angry with me when I break the apiary. I don't actually know if breaking the apiary will cause them to, uh, to get angry with me, but just on the off chance, in fact, if I lock this and I click export, can I export this bee? I put a jar in. I can. Cool. That's actually very nifty. You can kind of take them all out from the apiary, like so. At which point, I can just go ahead and break this apiary without anybody caring at all. And back over here, if we have that tier three apiary, which we still don't have, it's still being crafted. Eh? And there we go, tier three apiary. Let's get this guy down in here. And so now, with every finished cycle, let's do this, let's do this, and let's do this. But yeah, now every finished cycle should get us at four honeycomb blocks as opposed to eight honeycombs, which is a massive upgrade. You go from eight to 16, that doubles. And then here, that's effectively 36 honeycombs per cycle. So we've quadrupled the amount of combs that we're getting here. I have put the apiary down the wrong way here, chat. You are indeed correct. I did it again. I do it every time. Let me quickly break this and then we'll place it down without shift clicking. There we go. Perfect. Let's right click to make sure it's working. It is indeed. Boom, boom. And boom, cool. And as soon as these guys are in here, which they are already, perfect. We can then go ahead and get down the next ones. Boom, I assume this guy's maybe already ready to go. Nope, guess not. I thought he might have already been pollinated like the other ones and he might just go straight in. That's fine. But yes, now we should be getting a quadruple the amount of blocks from all these guys, which should make it that much easier for us to upgrade to tier two, tier three, and tier four apiaries for our main resource guys going forward. That might seem a bit excessive right now because we do have a lot of resources over here and we've got even more coming in. We don't really use the ones we have currently, but looking forward to the end of this pack, this pack does have singularities in it. And the ultimate singularity here is made with a ton of different kinds of singularities. And each one of these requires thousands of a given resource. So right here, one nickel singularity requires 3000 blocks of nickel. And I think we might need multiple ultimate singularities to craft some of these final end game recipes. And so we really do need to get a, a staggering number of resources, which hopefully shouldn't be too difficult for us to do with tier four apiaries and elite centrifuge multi-blocks. Real quick, one thing the Twitch chat pointed out is that there is a wither boss death muffler, which I did not know existed, but is actually gonna make uh, my life a whole lot easier. Yes, yeah, so if I do this and, is that just not, oh, it's wool, not stone. I thought it was stone that we needed. Do we have any string? We've got loads of string. Let me do this, this, and this. The idea behind this guy is we can place it down, let's say right about here, and then we can right click it. And now it says now hiding with a boss bars. And so I think that's gonna get rid of the sound stops with a boss death sound within an eight block radius and a right click to hide boss bar. I'm amazed that I'm taking uh, blast damage this far away from the wither, especially through the uh, the wither proof blocks. I'm not quite sure what the deal is there, but I do take blast damage every time. Thankfully though, it's quiet. Thankfully there's no boss bar. And next time I think we'll come back and we'll look at doing a bit more automation. Again, I do wanna move these. I'll probably move these over between streams, we're almost certainly gonna have to look into uh, expanding our channels going forward if we do get a lot of these molecular assemblers and ME interfaces. Uh, already here, you can see we're kind of filling up on the channels, and if we add more molecular assemblers and more ME interfaces to that, it is gonna go ahead and, and cause issues for us. But uh, we'll, we'll move those over. We'll do some more auto-crafting. I do want to look at auto-crafting the steel casing. If we can set up auto-crafting for the full chain, that would be quite useful. Automating the load altar, automating the auto starlight infuser and automating the pressure chamber should be fairly straightforward, I think. Uh, getting all that automated will make the late game stuff fairly easy as well. And we can also look, I think, some point soon at getting into Draconic Evolution as well. For that, we do need to get a few more bees that we don't currently have because we need to get a Draconian bee. Uh, this cool looking bee down here is made with a Terrasteel bee and an Enderium bee. So there's a little bit more Britannia that we need to get into and a little bit of uh, thermal expansion as well for that Enderium. But for the most part, uh, I think Draconic Evolution shouldn't be too far away for us. But that is, of course, a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and ramp up this episode of Sky Bees 2 there.